I think it'd be really fun to have you do something solo uh, for our audience. Sure. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I've been playing around with a tune that I think is just like very appropriate for uh, lockdown, quarantine, yep. pandemic world, yeah. uh, which is a tune called We'll Be Together Again. Oh, okay. Um, awesome. Which I think is the message that we want to be sending as I love that. <laughs> musicians, I love that. as people, as artists. Yeah, absolutely. We will, we will get through this. That's a beautiful we'll message. we'll look forward to the time when we're together again.
That Something was like lovely. That. that was lovely, <laughs> Thank man. Thank you. Oh, love the way you treated that melody. I love the reharms and the bass motion on that. So cool. Thanks, Johnny. Was that arranged or did you improvise? Pretty spontaneous, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's phenomenal. You got to write that down for our students. We're going to be able to play. <laughs> Too much work. Holy smokes. <laughs> wow, that's that's great. Well, uh, thank you for sharing that. That's so cool. I, I love I love how you're able to spontaneously create stuff like that in the moment. Um, that's what jazz is all about, right? That's what that's, jazz is all about, right? And that's the the joy of it. Why, that's why we're here. Yeah. What would you say are maybe the five pillars as an arranger of the main techniques that you use? Are there five or ten like things that you tend to go to as as an arranger or techniques that we have learned as jazz pianists? Yeah, definitely. So um, I, I've been breaking this down a lot. I, I'm sure I'll be, we'll be sharing. I just, I just wrote a book that dealt with a lot of these things. So I've been right. like really quantifying yeah. some different ways to approach tunes of the piano. Yeah. So, um, so we talked about, you know, bass line in the left hand, mm -hmm. melody in the right. And sometimes with a, you know, so lots of variations there, right? You could yeah. be a bass line in two, bass line in four. Sure. It could be a broken bass line, which means that you're not really playing any Why don't you show us an example of a, the, the two versus the four yeah, bass line? Yeah, sure. So. Right. Here's it. So this is in two. So that means the half note, right. or half notes in the measure. Right. And you're throwing some little ghost notes in, you know. Right, those little extra notes. Totally. That's, that's okay to do in a two feel, right? Absolutely. But that's I kind mean, of the starting point, is just can you get the, the chords on those beats? Because most, most tunes change chords every two beats. Yeah. So I find that to be helpful as well as a teacher. Is say, okay, this is generally when the, it's moving. So. Right. And yeah. I think for a lot of younger jazz musicians, both in bands and if they're maybe playing solo, a lot of people are really excited about the bass lines in four. Sure, which right. Which are exciting. Dum, 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 yeah. But you don't want to hit them over the head but with that either. But you want to wait for that. Sure, right. And especially if you're learning. It's so right. much easier to play a bass line in two. Than show, it show them your uh, four, your four on the... Four. interesting is when you have that, we, mm -hmm. so playing solo piano, we're always dealing with three elements, right? Mm -hmm. We're dealing with bass mm -hmm. of some sort, right. chords right. in the middle register. We kind of need that in some way and melody. Mm, and so it. what's interesting is that, you know, this doesn't technically have chords mm -hmm. in it necessarily. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I do when I'm playing a bass line is that I'll usually put my right hand down lower mm -hmm. and I'll play kind of a more active arpeggio something so that we hear the chords. So the mm -hmm. right hand is actually expressing the chords in the middle oh, register. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And we don't feel like we miss it. Interesting. Can you show us an example? Yeah, so I was just kind of doing it. But... Whereas if I play up here, the yeah. middle kind of starts to feel really empty. You lose some of the chords. That feels like more of a melody. That feels like more arpeggiated chords. Yeah, That's so you cool. don't hear the harmony as yeah. clearly. Yeah. Of course, you can also do what I call shuttling, which is going back and forth in the right hand. Sure. Um, you call yeah. it shuttling? Shuttling. Okay. Shuttling back and forth. Interesting, because you know we have a course we talk about jazz playing, and I call it three-part jazz playing. And you know, Autumn Leaves as an example. <laughs> all those elements in there exactly and each element sort of needs to be defined as well like in terms of I mean, you were soloing just now but from an arranging standpoint if you're playing a standard how do you get all three elements uh, in a tune like let's say you're playing that same tune yeah how would you throw the chords in underneath that aside from the solo that you just right played? so I mean it could be that you're playing the melody is the top note in your right hand Right, you know, more of a block chord. It could, style. yeah, it could yeah. be that, or you yeah. could do kind of more of a call and response. I like that. It's cool. And I kind of went back and forth, and I grabbed chords when I didn't have a lot of yeah. space to to go back and forth. Sure. And it's funny that you call it you call it three part. Three, it's like, yeah, it's like three distinct elements. Like you said, bass, melody, chord, or bass, melody, and chords. And you right. need to have those. Even right. if you're doing stride, you know. Um, yeah. You know, if, if it's that, that's fine. It's a root chord thing, but you just need to have that. It, it doesn't 
sometimes pianists overlook that, I feel. Right. Like they, they'll do the chords like a rootless voice sings melody and there's no bass. Right. And, and it's, it's important as a, a solo jazz pianist. Right. Well, I was going to say that I've, I've heard it called third hand technique. Third hand technique. And yeah. I always joke with my students, like, third hand technique right. is where you grow a third hand right. out of your belly button because you need those three parts. Yeah. Um, you know who is an, a, a master? This is Dave McKenna. Exactly. If you listen to much of his stuff. Yeah. He's just so good at, it's, it really sounded like he had a third and hand. Yeah, if you just listen to it without a video or anything, you don't know, like, where's that middle part coming yeah. from? Like, is that the, right. um, yeah, is that the left hand? Is that the right, right. hand? Right, um, right. He was a real master of that. So tell us more about this book. You, you just published a new book. Uh, yeah. What's the name of the book? Playing playing solo jazz piano. Playing solo I, I have jazz a visual piano. aid. Let me grab my visual yeah, aid yeah, if yeah. you want. Yeah, there it is. Ta-da. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So give us like a quick over, kind of overview of the book and... So what you do in the book? Yeah, I I think similarly to you, I'm a little bit obsessed with solo jazz piano, and mm -hmm. for the past 15 years, I've been doing like a lot of solo jazz piano competitions, and I've been teaching a lot of solo jazz piano too, yeah. which for me is really hard. Yeah, um, because there's so many ways, like you said, that you could start it and a approach it. Right. Um, and so I just wanted to take. For me, there wasn't a resource out there mm. that really took all of the approaches that I'm aware of and yeah. kind of tried to put them into a single resource. Mm. So this kind of deals with all of the traditional styles. There's four chapters at the beginning about stride piano. Mm. Love that. Um, and then a bunch of traditional swing techniques, yeah. um, uh, four chapters about ballad playing, mm. reharmonization, mm. things like that. Um, a, a whole section about what I call shared hand voicings, which mm. is where instead of having one hand do two of those elements, mm. you have the chords shared in mm. between. Um, I'll just demonstrate that. Yeah, I'll like, see that. So yeah. it's almost like these two fingers and these two fingers, these guys are on the yeah, chords, and then yeah. the outer fingers are doing the melody. Yeah, of the bass. that's like an outer inner type, type of technique. Is that the chord structure you're using, E flat? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like almost like getting chordals in there. Is that kind of the, yeah. the technique, kind of an outer inner type of deal? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's a really cool sound. Like, it's, there's so much you can do. So what would you call the outer inner, or I, I call it outer inner. I call it shared hand. Shared, shared hand. hand, okay, that's cool. Shared hand voicing. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Yeah, so that, awesome. anyway, that's that's another thing in the book. There's a whole chapter on perpetual motion techniques, yeah. which is kind of a weird passion of mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, so I'm I'm uh, super excited to put put the book like out in the world yeah. and see who gets intrigued by what. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a know. fantastic book. I, I did have a chance to go through it, and I love. You know what I love about his about your book is um, that you use the same tune. You use Danny Boy, and then you show all the things you can do with that one tune, which is so cool because a lot of students, you know, they feel like to play interestingly, they have to learn lots of different tunes. It's like, hey, you can take one melody and do a million things with it. So that I love that about the book.
Hey, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this, be sure to check out the full length interview at the link below. In the full interview, Jeremy shares even more gems on solo jazz piano playing, including tips on soloing, how to structure your practice time, and performance advice. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.